Well, uh, and that's one thing about Augusta National. Say what you will. Mm-hmm. The reason I admire them, the reason I admire them is like any other sports uh, company in the world, they don't bow down to television. Television truly bow da- bows down to them. They don't let TV dictate. They might take TV ideas and implement them, but they don't let TV dictate a thing to them. And they don't even take advertising dollars. They've even gone without advertising so that you couldn't have outside pressure on advertisers to try to make them do something that, agree with them or not, they weren't going to be pressured into doing something they didn't want to do until they were ready to do it. Okay, You can dislike that all you want, but give them credit for uh, in this world of sports where you got television that dominates. That's why college sports is in such a mess because the people who actually care about college sports should care about college sports, should care about the kids, should care about the fans. They care more about television dollars, and television could give a rat's ass about the kids or about the fans or about anything like that. So that's why you have such a mess you got today in college athletics, a big part of it is because they turned over their heart and soul to television, and television may do. Augusta National would not do that, does not do that, whether it's CBS or ESPN. Keep them on a very short leash with those one-year contracts and, um, and say, you know what, you're going to play by our rules, okay? We're not going to play by your rules. You're going to play by our rules. And so we wrapped up another edition of of Augusta, another edition of the Masters, and we welcome back M.J. Ward to Sports Talk, who put in another yeoman's job covering the event for Golf Today and for uh, other outlets uh, like ours and other radio outlets uh, in the country and around the world. That's why I say he is a golf reporter of international esteem, though he cut his teeth right here in South Carolina at the university. Good to have you back with us, MJ. How are you? It's a pleasure to be with you guys. The pleasure is all, all ours, and uh, I like to say cheers. Like you like to sign off your email with cheers. I'll say cheers to you. Um, are you back home or are you still down in the south? No, I I, I uh, got back uh, today, and um, you know it's it's um, it, it was a it was a really uh, interesting tournament. I mean. Not to plug what I said, but as I said to you on the telecast, I mean, when we talked a couple of days ago, and I was referencing what Scotty Scheffler is, and, you know, I did, and some people got back to me on this. They said, Matt, how could you mention Secretariat to a Scotty Scheffler? And I told him, you must have missed the telecast yesterday, um, because this guy has another gearbox. There, there's nobody like this guy right now. There's there's nobody. Um what he did over the last several weeks is at the Tiger level because he he just he, you know he he does what he has to do and he um he showed uh, you know a lot and i had predicted that the score would be minus 10 um scotty came in at minus 11 um his play on the weekend uh there were some times i mean i will tell you on saturdays Third round, he double bogeyed the tenth, bogeyed the eleventh. Now he's got an eight footer for par on twelve. And a lot of times, Phil, a lot of people don't realize this. Everybody talks about the eagles and the birdies. Sometimes you need a stabilizing situation. And when Scotty needed to make an eight foot putt, he did. And then the next hole, he eagles and he goes right back to the lead. I, I want to reference in something to you historically. Uh, one of my mentors very early on was a gentleman by the name of Herb Wynn. He was the first golf correspondent for Sports Illustrated. Eventually ran a column in the New Yorker for many years. And when Jack Nicklaus won his first Masters in 63, Jack had the lead. He lost the lead, and then he got it back. And one of Wynn's famous comments was, there are a lot of people that can get the lead, but when they lose it, very rarely do they ever get it back. Hmm. And Scotty was out of the lead briefly, and then he came back, and then it was just, you know, what he showed yesterday, he basically put the tournament away when he walked off the 10th green with three straight birdies. 
um, he was sailing. And it, and it helped that the other guys made some tactical mistakes. I mean, Morgawa and Aubert all po- po- found the pond at 11. Homa got a very bad break on 12. But when you go long on 12, there's no guarantee that you're going to you're gonna catch a lie. So, you know, all in all, there was a new sheriff in town. Um, at 27 years old, he's got a great team around him. I have said repeatedly that this could be a real monster year. And what's a monster year? At minimum right now, two majors. And I think this guy's fully capable of taking that on. And there really isn't anybody in the golf planet that you can point to and say, I think this guy can take him out because I don't see it right now. Yeah. Talking to MJ Ward, recapping the Masters. Yeah, he seems like he's got the complete package. He's, of course, got the talent, the skills, the ability, the team around him, the organization, uh, the demeanor. He handles himself extremely well. He's got that focus. It just seems like uh, he he – he doesn't know the thousands of people around him. He's so focused on what's happening with his golf swing. Uh, he doesn't take chances. He, he's not afraid to win by one. He doesn't care whether he wins by one or he wins by six. He's, he's not going to push the issue. And, of course, his, his putting is off the charts. His ability to save putts is amazing. So he's got the complete package. And you talk about a super year, but let's just talk about among the masters, as, as, and he's young. Would you say 27? He's got two jackets. 27. So, I mean, yeah. could he rise up the charts of the all-time greats at Augusta National? Well, I mean, I mean, again, you know, I, you know, I think people always – I'm always hesitant when people use the word great. I remember Lee Trevino telling me that, you know, one time years ago, he said, Matt, there are very few people that the word great can be put next to their name. Mm-hmm. Um, you really have to go through – and this is a guy that won six majors. So – What I would say is this, unless there's an injury or somehow there's a lack of desire, I don't see this guy really being held back. Um, You're going to have to beat this guy. He's not coming back. I said that the other day, and some people got to me and they sent me texts and they said, oh, come on, what about the double bogey and, you know, what about the the bogey he made on, on 10 and 11 on Saturday? I said, that's right. And he made the par, and then he made eagle. Maybe you missed that part. Um, a lot of these guys, you know, when they go off the track, they may not get it back together. I mean, what really is going to be interesting to see is is who can step up to play what he's doing right now. I mean, they all know the they all know the drill, Phil. Mm. He is the new sheriff in town. Um, you win three of your four starts. There are guys that can't shoot three or four free throws. For God's sake, okay. <laughs> this is a guy that has taken out the best players in the world, and he's won three times and came in second the other time. There's only one name I can think of that matches with that in recent past. You know, guys like Tiger Woods. Okay, now I'm not suggesting he's going to win double-digit majors in a career, but what he has demonstrated so far, there has not been a letdown in terms of what he's achieved to date. He is doing what he needs to do, and he had the spotlight on him at Augusta because he was the world-ranked number one player. He did only what Tiger has done. He won the Masters twice, Tiger, by being number one. Scotty matched that by winning yesterday. MJ, the best way I can think to describe what I watched over the weekend was it was relatively boring, uneventful Masters tournament, and I think that's a credit to the skill level of Scotty Scheffler because he just kind of sucked the air out of the room, and once he got to leave, as you pointed out, he wasn't coughing it back up. But I was looking at his round and comparing it to some of the other guys over the weekend. He only shot, and I say only, but he was only 500 par on the weekend. Did we see Augusta, maybe the golf course, actually have some teeth into it over the weekend where normally you always see these big well, charges you know, Chris, on Saturday? You a good point, Chris. I think a lot of the guys are out there – they were, pre- they were probably playing more not to lose rather mm-hmm. than to win. I mean, Homa went 33 holes without a birdie. I mean, you can't do that at that level. With Bryson DeChambeau, you just don't know where his head is at certain points. I mean, he can play some really gifted shots, but, you know, he hasn't figured out that 90% of a tree is bark, 
You know, you can't go through <laughs> it. Okay. Um, Wait a minute. I've always been told 90% of air, a tree right? is air. Well, that's that's what they're selling at the at the sporting goods stores, okay? Um, but, I, I mean, they are, he's the kind of guy that I thought could have made a move. The sad part about it was we're never going to know because when he made double at 11, the air goes out of his balloon. He made two more birdies. He didn't give up. He's the kind of guy you got to watch. Um, guys like uh, Nikolai Hogart. I mean, he fell back. But there's a new generation of players here. I mean, what I would say to guys out there is people like Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth, um, you know, Joaquin Neiman even. You know, when are these guys going to be playing in the big events? Um, you know, there's going to be question marks. I mean, we come to Valhalla next month. That's Rory's last major. That's a decade ago, okay? So, you know, you're right what you said, Chris. There really wasn't any moving day on Saturday. Part of it was the golf course was extremely demanding. I mean, when you have the kind of wind that was blowing on Friday, a lot of these guys got gun shy. And then come on Saturday, in my opinion, I think more of these guys played more not to lose. Mara Gallo was the only one who really made a serious move I'm kind of shocked that he did what he did on number nine because I think if he had gotten to the back nine, when you're playing with the leader, when you're looking at him and he's looking at you, it's a whole different situation. But once he fell out of it and Scotty had then put some birdies together, it really became you know, a moot point. There was so much made on Tiger making the cut, and I understand that. He set a record 24 consecutive made cuts at, at Augusta, but then to play the way he did over the weekend and come back yesterday, and I was almost, I almost felt sorry for him when he commented it was a good week. He finished last. MJ, has, has his expectation maybe dipped, uh, you know, dipped to the point that just him being around the majors and, and maybe making a cut or two, is that all we can expect from him now? I, I You know, look, I have – let me put it this way. In the Mount Rushmore of golf, according to Matt Ward, <laughs> Tiger Woods is there, so is Jones, so is Jack, and so is Hogan. It, he's mm-hmm. cemented. It's never going to change. What about Arnie? Shanks. What about Arnie? He can hit Shanks' shots wherever he wants. Where you put Arnie? He's not going off Mount Rushmore. Where's Arnie? But I actually have to say, you know, it, it, it's over, okay? I mean, elite-level golf, when he was in the Bahamas, He finished 20 shots behind Scotty Scheffler. 20 shots. I mean, if you gave him four shots a round, he still loses by four. I mean, you know, look, you can never say anything bad. 15-time major champion, 81 PGA Tour wins. I mean, it just goes on and on. But there is a point. And I think part of this is stubbornness. I think part of what Tiger has within him is that great trait, which is, He was stubborn to always push himself and do things when people said he could not do them. He does not want to leave on somebody's terms, whether it's me or somebody else saying he needs to hang it up, and then he does that. I mean, I don't think he wants to do it. I think he wants to have at least some kind of curtain call. He's not, in my opinion, I don't see a a 16th major coming, and I think the best you're going to get now is can he complete 72 holes of golf? But I think there is a point in time where he's going to say, hey, look, I, I just can't do this. And I know it's going to be really hard for him to say that, as it is for any world-class athlete, because you always knew that you could do it. And when everybody said you couldn't do it, that was your motivation. But I just don't see how much more that he wants to do if he's going to be going around shooting 75s and 76s or whatever. He just can't bring the numbers out to the level that he needs to play. And, you know, to say what Bill Parcell said many years ago about you are what your record says you are. Well, you are what your golf score says you are. And, Hmm. you know, Tiger, last major was five years ago. That's an eternity in golf. Um, So, yeah, I agree with you. I just think he wants to set the stage for when he can do that. Um, And then he can say on his own terms, I'm leaving it. I mean, I fully expect, just to let you guys know this, that the PGA of America will offer Tiger the captaincy for the Ryder Cup matches at Bethpage next year. Mm -hmm. And there may be an an additional announcement made when Tiger accepts the captaincy, which I think he will at that point. 
But we'll see how that plays out. I didn't hear you mention Arnie on your Mount Rushmore. Well, Arnie, Arnie has, let me just say this, the intrinsic qualities of Arnold is like what Seve Ballesteros was for Europe. They, they have the intangibles that go beyond just the scores and the records that you accomplished. Either, both of those gentlemen certainly have to be recognized for what they did I mean, if, if anybody's ever been into Europe when Seve was alive and he was playing, it was magical, and Arnold was the same. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I stand with the four people I just mentioned. When you look at the record book and what was accomplished on the golf course, those, those four are bulletproof. There is, there's nothing that's going to take Tiger off of Mount Rushmore. But I just think it would be best for him to think about, you know, is this the way I want to end it? And I don't think he wants to end it the way it came, like at Augusta on Saturday and Sunday. But that's going to be his call to make, as it is for every athlete who reaches that point. Fantastic stuff, as always. MJ, thank you. Always great having you part of Sports Talk. And we look forward to having you next with us from the uh, U.S. Open. PGA. No, PGA. the PGA. No, PGA. the PGA Championship. PGA. My bad. PGA. Yes, sir. Yeah, we'll be in Louisville, so... Maybe I'll stay there right before, and I'll stay there after the races and stay, just stick around. Well, don't don't lose your shirt on our behalf. <laughs> well, I'll tell them that Phil and Chris recommended a couple of horses, so I'm sure they'll tell me who they are. <laughs> My recommendation would be put all your money on Secretariat. Okay, that's up. exactly. Well, uh, yeah, amen on that, guys. Always a pleasure. Nice to be with you as always. Yep, thank you, M J Ward. Man, what an addition he is to what we do, covering golf here on Sports Talk between Don and M J. At the Masters on Thursday, Friday, you you can't get better coverage. I don't care where you listen.